The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi folks, Friday, 22nd of April, we're looking at uh, the Dow. This is, a, this is a, it's very interesting because the Dow was kind of the leader on the upside. It went to a new recovery high yesterday at 35,492. Let me just type that in so I've got it there. 35,000. 35,492. Here we are at 34,500. And, uh, Yes, that was quite a turnaround interest rate. Now, what's interesting is that did we not know that the Fed were going, they were going to be talking about 50 basis point hike? I mean, really, uh, there's nothing new. It's just what we're looking at here is that there's been a rotational correction. The Dow has been one of the stronger indices. The S&P, so the Dow is down 300 at 34,495, playing a little bit of catch up here. Here's the chapter where falling axe formation. We're nicely above. It did beautifully and then pulled back, uh, as I say, what, 1,100 points or something in the last uh, uh, two sessions after making a new recovery high. There's still a leg B in the weekly chart. Gray leg B because the stochastics very weak at 53 and the MACD is still negative. I don't want to see a deflect lower, but that's what we're looking at. If you're looking at the S&P, here we go, S&P uh, down, made a new, uh, new, you call them recovery loans, uh, recovery, recovery highs. What do you call them on the downside? Uh, recovery lows, unrecovery lows, unrecovery lows. And we're looking at uh, a price point of, uh, 43.67 down 25. What is quite fascinating is the way the 200 period moving average. Remember, I love to use certain techniques. You don't have to use them at all until they become important. But look at the sine wave uh, up and up, up and below the uh, orange 200 period exponential moving average at 44.10. We've been nicely above at 46.37. We were down to 41. 14 back on the 24th of Feb. We just keep this is the way I thought that we would have April. Um, the patterns that we'd be looking at in April was a big consolidation phase with some leadership and some real failures, and that we're still going to be looking for the cues. Takes, takes a long time. I'll talk about then. I'll talk about it now because I'll, I'm liable to forget. The index 100, those fantastic stocks, not all in the index 100, but those growth stocks that had spectacular 2020 to 2021 rallies and then sometimes starting about September of last year, just could not get out of their own way. And let's look at this. Uh, I'll do the QQQ right now too, because that's what I'm talking about. So what happens is November the 22nd, there's this potential for like a head and shoulders, a complex one, but 4071 on the 22nd, pulls back to the 378 level, then goes right back and gets real close to the 401, 402 area. And that makes your cup formation with the right side failure. Look, the left side, look at that strength in that one. This is good, uh, strong. And this is weak. This is the vertical line I call it uh, this is a Chapman Wave vertical test. And we call this weak. <laughs> so there it is. And it says that on the rally, there was very little there. And when we saw the same thing on the downside, look at this. It comes down to 318.28, around about the 24th of Feb. Rallies up and then retests at 317.45 within less than a point. And the stochastic and MACD were just slightly better. Not the on-balance volume, which gave you a nice turnaround, but the others. So there was a rally and goes to 371 and then comes back down. So this vertical testing, you know, this is very much like when you see Tom doing his charts and all he has is the, the volume. I use on-balance volume. He uses volume. 
and then he does this vertical test of what's going on. I, I love that because whatever technique you're using, just be consistent about it. And if you look at this, you'll see that it wasn't a very, very, very strong um, technical divergence between the 318 level on the 24th of Feb and the low that was run about the 14th of March. So the run-up said, you're running up, but you don't really have the veracity to sustain the move, and now you've come back. But look, with all that's going on, it hasn't broken down. The low today is 331.64, which is about 317.45. So there's room to go to the downside. But I'm looking at this saying, it's very good that you've used time. Remember, I said April is going to be an issue because I think we're going to be using time rather than price. If you look at the semiconductors, SMHs, retesting 237.32, uh, the low, I think it was on the uh, 14th of March, runs up to the 283-ish level, pulls back, comes back to 237.09. And where is it today? It's testing 237.82 is the low. So what we're looking at is these, all of these areas are being tested as, as a base. And that says to me that you've got to look at the selectivity of each index. Let's just go back to the Dow. Look at the Dow. Has a completely different pattern. It is weak today, much weaker than the others, down 1%. S&P is only down 0.76, and the uh, QQQs are down 0.25. So in this rotation that I've been talking about, the rotational correction is ongoing. That's the reason why we've had uh, select stocks, and I've tightened up stocks. We got stopped out of one of our gold stocks today. <clears throat> we had a, a nice gain, and then we've... We got back in, and we've got a little bit of a loss on the on the new position, but on the core position, uh, basically, I, I'd say overall it's more of a gain than a loss. But most importantly, what we are looking at is you've got to be very selective here. You've got to be thinking what's working and what's not working. So in terms of that, look at this. If I go through the left side, right side. The high of the 35,372 level in the Dow back around about the 28th of March, pull back, and then two days ago, that's yesterday, a high of 35,492. The technicals were were a little bit weaker, but not not weak enough to say, oh, oh we're going all the way back to uh, the 33,000. Not yet, anyway. At this particular point, it's got some. Uh, some stability. Now, what's really important about this is that so a question came in. I'm going to deal with all the questions as I go through the different charts as I do a review. So the the most important question that I got uh, while while I was away yesterday, while and then I came back was with the Fed um, really taking away the punch bowl with the Fed. Are we going to raise rates? Surely, historically, we've seen this over and over again where the market succumbs to selling pressure because you don't have the Fed buoying the market. And I, I don't disagree with that. I mean, I've spoken about that for a long time. One of the reasons why we raise cash is we only in very select positions in areas that are kind of what I call under the radar. Um, and I have to, I can't disagree. I can concur. But I'm going to talk about the difference, and I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 388, S&P's down 35. Dow's with Chapel Tiger Conditions Hour. Be right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So in regard to what we're looking at and why we're looking at it, it's a, go a good question came in here. Hi, Basil. What do you think about buying JEPI as a long-term investment? Is it at a peak G or C? Would it be okay to buy at the 200 EMA? So the question is a very good one and, and good eye. Uh, yeah, that wasn't, uh, did you get a C? I didn't, uh, I got a, um, yeah, I got a B, G slash B. So basically in the chat way methodology, since we technical Friday today, this is the low at about 57 right there on the uh, 24th, was it, of Feb? Yeah, 24th of Feb. It goes to 5708. Let me just type that in. So 5708, and then it rallies very sharply, and it goes 57.08. Now, what is uh, JEPI? JEPI is JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF. It's an income distribution for a monthly distribution. I guess that you have covered call ETF for the S&P 500 designed to mitigate, vol mitigate volatility and in general income. Let's look at the other one while we're at it. That was SPLV. I hope I remember this one. Yes, I did. Uh, making a peak F as we as we, we look at it. And this is the um, in Invesco S&P 500 low volatility ETF. <clears throat> Remember, I like to look at these double tops. I've done a whole, I have in fact a whole slew of that that we wanted to look at today. So what is the difference between the move that was made? I'm, I'm, I'm comparing the two because it's in the same area of at least, as, a, as they say, mitigating uh, some decline in the S&P. And we've got the high of 68.86 back on um, in December, pulls back sharply to the 61s, goes back to 69.16. Just, oh, wait a minute, that, that must have changed. That must be 69.82. So that's 69.82 just yesterday. So the question is, is this the kind of is this the kind of instrument that you want when you just want to put some cash somewhere? You want to be, you want it to work for you. You don't want to put it into like a bank account. And the answer, I think, is yes, but you've got to be very selective. So now we can go back to the question of JEPI. SPLV is the, oh, let me tell you what it is. I think I forgot. SPLV is the 
Yes, I did. Invesco S&P 500, low volatility ETF. It's been spectacular up until yesterday where it went to a new all-time high. Let's go to JEPI, which is not quite the same pattern. It's close, but not the same. It did not go to a new all-time high. So this is a little bit weaker. It's a 6106 down 63 cents today. Now, that's, that's very interesting because... It's been making higher highs. Now, the question is, is it a G or is it a B? I'm going to go with this as most probably a G, but to, to make it guarantee that it's a G and not a B, because B would say, hey, you should still go to higher highs. G says, uh-oh, be careful. We're in a bigger consolidation. My thinking is that this is in a bigger consolidation right now. I think you also have to treat these as individual study exercises. You can't just say, oh, yeah, this is great because our market is shaky, shaky, shaky. This has gone to new highs. Look how they acted in the last two days. Market came down sharply. They both came down sharply. Uh, SPLV is a two-day move, not as sharp as the other. To tell you the truth, on a purely visual basis, also on a technical basis, but I mean, you've got a, it's a visual and technical at the same time. This is a, a much, SPLV is a much better one, but it was at highs. And the question has to be in this environment, regardless of what's happening on, look, the SPY is not at lows, it's at recent lows on a weekly basis, but go back to the 410.64 low of the 24th of February, and here we are at 4.33. Um, it's not. It definitely is not doing the. It's not at lows as you are looking at the very image of the uh, SPLV and the uh, JE. Uh, what was that say? Well, JEPI. Um, and uh, so there is a big difference, and they are outperforming. Those other two are outperforming. So the question is: This is a simple question. What about buying a starting position of the 200 pre moving average of 60.52? And I'm going to agree. I'm going to suggest that even it could go a little lower than that. I would just start the position because what you want is you want to get your foot in the door so that you understand it, how it acts and reacts to the market environment because this is really, this is. Uh, and consider it almost like a VIX index in a sense because it's going to give you the sentiment of the market play in real terms, but based on um, based on buying and selling of equities as opposed to an emotional volatility index. Because you know that if there's a rally all of a sudden today and by 3 o'clock the Dow is only down 235 points instead of 435 points, that VIX will probably start to pull back. And we don't know yet exactly what will happen to those other two instruments. So it's a, a, a simple a question, and I'm going to make it a simple answer. And then if it hits there, give me a yell. We'll look at it together. And that's at 60.52. It says 61.01, down 68 cents just today alone. Now, the big thing is this. I've got an L in the weekly chart of the JP, JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF. Um, and can it hold with an L all the way through next week? It won't if it suddenly starts to trade under 60.50. So as it's getting to the 60.52 area, we're going to have to do a lot of assessment. The reason why I say start a small position is only because I don't see this as the, the big go-to area at this particular point because of the rectangle formation that's gone slightly above the previous high. It's just a small one and it's narrow for the moment and should go back under it should go underneath it and then try to come back and hold. So it's a starter position. Now what happens if it's a sixty one? What happens if by Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, it hasn't even gone to 60.52. In fact, it, hold, it holds very nicely in 61.45. I would still say the rectangle formation says, wait for a bit of a pullback. Uh, and then you can think about just under 61. You could change that. Look, as a starter position. I mean, if you wanted to just have it as a starter position to get a feel, you could buy it right here on its way down at 61 uh, and not wait for that extra uh, 48 cents. I would have a little discipline. I'd stick around and wait for the 48 cents.
All right. So that's what we wanted to do that. Now let's go through the other things. What we're looking at is that the XLK, which is the S&P Select. Um, here we go. Let me just move this over. This is the S&P Select Tech Spider Fund. Made a peak D in the monthly chart. Uh, this is a lousy candle when you think about what happened over the last two weeks. This is really an ugly candle uh, in the monthly chart. Weekly candle is making its second dreaded H pattern. It's at 145.71 down to $1.49 and it's taken out the left side low. A, B, C. This is now a leg D to the downside, a brand new sell mode in the downside. And that is telling me. Loud and clear, as I've said many, many times for, really, it's not weeks, it's months. Be careful of the tech sector. That tech sector could be great for trade, but there is a lot more damage. If, uh oh, oh, time to All right, there's a bunch to go through. Uh, I've got questions coming in. At one about ARC. Uh, ARC is the uh, Kathy Woods uh, uh, fund, innovation fund. Not doing very well. I'll be back in a minute. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, questions came in. Uh, Nike, Nike's in the trading range. Remember the lowercase h, they could become a lowercase, lowercase h, they become a lowercase m, basically in a rectangle formation. It's there, uh, showing a little bit of weakness today. Uh, MACD's good, stochastic's not so great at 70 percent. Oh, and I have a caller. All right, let's just go straight to the, um, let's see. Oh, we've got Sharky in Natick. 
Uh, yes. How are you? Hi, 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 Basil. How are you? Good, good, uh, good. good morning to you. Um, good morning to so, you. So, yes. my question. I knew you touched on it a little bit, and you know, there's a lot of stuff on the airwaves about the Fed now uh, having to hike, you know, or, or thinking about going 75 basis points, and you know, every time that they get out, and even though it's known that they're probably most likely in May going to increase the Fed funds rate by 50 basis points and stuff, uh, I, I'm just trying to get a get a handle of. You know your opinion on that. I know there was on there was an article in The Economist about the Fed failing and stuff. And how how, how you know how do you feel? What is your outlook? Or, you know what you so, think? Um, you I know think that impact a, will have on the markets. That's an obviously an extremely relevant question. Unfortunately, it should be an irrelevant question. I don't know how <laughs> long I've been showing that. I've been showing for a couple of years. I've been saying why on earth. Doesn't the Fed start to uh, raise rates as demand as long as demand is there? But I mean, historically, that's the way it's always worked. There's demand for bonds, therefore the rates will go a little higher, and you just keep doing that as the as the demand is there. And a certain point, it gets to a, it gets to a stage where uh, folks say, you know what, at this particular point, I, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to pay that much for auto loans or whatever it is. And there's a little bit of a cooling off. Uh, back in the 1970s, we had these recessions that were really six weeks to about, mm, I'm not even sure there were much more, six weeks to maybe eight weeks of a, of a, a, a decline. No, they were even shorter than that. There were these declines, and then there were rallies to new recovery high, then a, then a decline, and they they kept rotating. But you know that that that's part of the whole thing. So as I'm looking at it right now, the Fed is as always behind the eight ball, and that yep. the issue for me is not the raising of rates; it's the timing. Yep. And I think the market is going to, and that's one of the reasons why I've said for a long time, if anyone has the cash that they've been putting to work, uh, as we were looking at it back at the end of last year, I said, time to take money off and you can start putting it back in increments every month. And then about three, four weeks ago, I said, you know what, this is the first time I'm going to say, take a little bit back off um, and hold, hold off to have money because at some point, we will get that 2,500 to 3,000 point Dow decline as things suddenly come together. But overall, the market has anticipated all of this to the extent that um, it's been spoken about often enough. And it's really, how does the market react? Well, what we've seen is in the QQQ, which is the growth stock area, you've had this huge decline. It really is a huge decline when you put it together with the way um, even the S&P, which is not acting as well as the Dow, the, the, how that's that's acted. But if you're looking at historically going from 408 in the QQQs down to the 318 level, yeah, 100 points, it's what, 25 something, some around about 25% range. That's a pretty big move. But when you think of all the conditions, war, um, inflation, like we haven't seen in decades and decades, you've got talk about rates going much higher. Well, they have gone higher, but they're not historically where they were uh, back about 10 years or more ago. So I, I think that we've got to put it together. And that's the reason why I'm saying there are sectors. Not only that, if you think of it this way, uh, Sharky, if you think of it as um, this... There's a chance that we could have, I, I can't really call it a new economy, but for so long, presidents have spoken about the United States being a little more independent in that we we produce, we, we get back to having factories and we manufacturing goods. If you think about it that way, in the last six to eight months, I've read more and more and more about Made in America. There, there are whole areas of New England that are towns that are mostly the craftsmen, they're doing fantastic jobs. If you think about it as, as the 1920s with the automobile companies, there were hundreds and hundreds of automobile companies here in Massachusetts alone. You're from Massachusetts. There were so dozens and dozens. I think there are actually a couple of hundred um, automobile manufacturers. We are right in that stage now. There are all over the show, there are people starting to develop um, 
or electric automobiles. So in many ways, this could be a very exciting period. Um, we're not reading about it. We're not. We, it's just hard to grasp under these conditions. So I see that there are a lot of very positive aspects, but there are a lot of. I mean, if you go back to some of those. Uh, some of those stocks. I mean, yes, yes, a company, a fantastic company, Adobe, uh, in the in the sweet spot all the way to its high back in 2021, uh, which which it was at 700. Uh, what was it exactly? I can give it to you. Uh, eight, no, 699.54 with a Chapman Wave 2 bar reversal on the 22nd of November at a peak E. And what does it do? It drops just a little bit and goes down to the 400s. I mean, that is, that's cloud digital commerce if you're looking at CRM. So what I was thinking of uh, as I was, as I was uh, on, on the road yesterday, I'm saying to myself, when you think of areas, if you look at the, look, look at the gold index, you can go to the gold, let's go to the GDX. I'm, I'm answering your question in a, in a kind of a comprehensive way that I really want to do today. In any case, get to this. Look at the GDX. Look at that move to the high that was made, the double top, left side, right side, uh, price time match, as well as a vertical uh, decline in the MACD and stochastic in the monthly chart when the GDX went to the 66-ish area back in this, uh, late December, I think it was December of 2020, uh, 2010, and then it double tops at 66.98 in 2011, and then it was out of favor. And that's the thing. It was out of favor for four or five years before it started to kick in again. So I, the whole thing is when sectors go out of favor, they go out of favor for a number of reasons. But one of the reasons is that they just became so overbought in every metric that they need huge, a lot of time, and a lot of price to digest their gains. Now, if you look at SLX, you look at the, the steel sector down from the high of yesterday, close to all time highs, has Hi. the same double, yeah, double same top. Double, 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 double. Whoops. Whoops. Uh, I, sorry, did you say something? Right. So, so what I'm looking at is there is a rotation going on where the deep cyclicals like the steel sector, uh, like aluminum, Alcoa made a, made a high at 98 on the 25th of March. It's trading now at 68.76 where there have been big declines. I don't want to ignore that. So I'm saying there's a rotation going on. There are still some sectors that are acting well, but we've got to be looking at newer things. If you look at the airline index, we can talk about that. So I, 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 I'll continue answering your question when we get back. Shark, if you want to say that's fine. But I think it's, I will a, stay. it's a good question. I, I okay, will stay, good. Basil. I will stay. Okay. Uh, enjoying it all. I will stay. Good. Thank you. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back, and we're back to Sharky and make massive talk about the Fed. So let me just uh, sum it up. But looking at the Fed, the Fed, as long as I can remember, the Fed has pretty much always got things wrong. When Volcker came in, even he, I mean, at first it looked like he was doing things wrong, but then, of course, he already put the squeeze on, and we got rid of that inflation. If that's the only way to do it, well, that's the way it's going to have to be, I guess. But what we're really looking at here is that it was both. It was really the Ukraine. For, for me, the big issue has been... When we look at the breadbasket of, of a, a large part of the world, the, your, Ukraine being in a, a, a just a terrible, terrible situation. I mean, I don't know where they're getting income from at all right now. So if that's the case, then you've got to expect, if you're looking at, we are still long for subscribers, the DBA, which is the uh, DBA Agricultural Fund. But if I said earlier in the week and late last week, I think we're getting close to a point where the commodities will pull back. So this is part of that whole inflation thing. This is part of what the Fed looks, looks at. So if you're looking at crude oil, crude oil is uh, down uh, almost two dollars at 102.09 it's not going anywhere right now but it is stuck it hasn't gone high if you're looking at gold gold is down not going anywhere but it's stuck it isn't going back to those recent highs to me that's really important if you're looking at i said steel stocks they're pulling back today they made a pg in the daily char uh, chart if you want to compare the left side to the right side in the vertical uh, match you can go right there uh, and at uh, just under 70, back around about the 26th of March, uh, the technicals were strong, and now they're much weaker. So the doji candle at PG in the most recent all-time high. So you can see there's a pullback. And so I said to subscribers, you've got to be ready for some kind of pullback in the commodities. You can go to lithium. I mean, you can go everywhere. Lithium, look at this. Huge move up, peak deep over the 95, 96 area uh, a few months ago trading now at 68. So what I am looking at is that there's a rotation going on. The smash to the downside hasn't been what you'd normally expect. I think there are just too many bears out there, so that's going to give a cushion. As soon as the market rallies again and then everyone says, oh, okay, I think this is it, probably that's when you get. That's why I've said keep money handy. There's going to be another shoe to drop, whether we take out the lows of, of this year, uh, say in the Dow, which is at the 20, what is it, uh, 34, 20, 32, 32,272 level. I, I'm not so sure, but there will be at least a very sharp pullback and there'll be a buying opportunity, but it's become more and more selective. Number one, you can't have the generals lead without the soldiers. And we've kind of got that in the Dow right now. So that's not such a great sign. The other thing is that you also look at the rotational aspect, and even within the groups, like, for, for instance, for subscribers, I have loved the cybersecurity area, but there's nothing to buy because it's 
they are acting very poorly. But I picked up one, which is Akamai Technology, and it's holding. It made a new all-time, well, not all-time, but a new high yesterday. But the left side, right side vertical uh, price match it says there's a little bit of weakness. You can see that, but it was made, it was almost near all-time high. So even within sectors, you got some leadership and a number of things fading. So when I to answer the question about the Fed, the Fed is always behind the eight ball. I think in a way that's baked into the to the market because the market is also dealing with remember I, I think uh, I, well for for months I've been saying when when the Fed wants higher uh, uh, the pr commodity prices, when prices start to increase, I don't know how they put the genie back in the box, but it's going to be tough. And that's kind of what we've got. So in that regard, you're looking at high prices now. Do we start to see a stalling because the ongoing conflict in the uh, in, in Ukraine Russia is going to be just an ongoing thing? I think the Fed has a lot to look at because they have to. I know they don't; they're not supposed to, but really they have to take the whole package in. If all of a sudden you get a deflation in the commodities, even if just just briefly. That can give them the chance to maybe just do a 50 rather than 75% increase. So we're looking at a lot of things, but I am going to say to you, they invariably make a mistake. They're bound to make a mistake this time. We've just got to be ready. Um, but that doesn't mean to say that there aren't areas that could act very well in the meantime. Have I answered the question in a very long-winded way? Yes. Basil, so, Basil, I want to thank you. That was just super. And I hope everyone else, I'm sure everyone else benefited from it, too. I, just super. Just super. Well, thank, thank you, so you much. very much. I appreciate your call. So to put that into perspective, we can't ignore that uh, that uh, oil is still pretty at 102. I mean, that, whew, when you fill up the tank, it just you, your eyes pop out. You say, wow wasn't doing that uh, you know, a year ago or so. And if you look at UNG, which is United States Gas Fund, it's in this process of pulling back. It's had an island reversal at a peak E. It's a leg D in the weekly. So I think that these commodities have a chance to pull back. As they pull back, the Fed is going to say, oh, who? Oh, wait a minute, maybe we've got that. We said it'd be temporary. Well, they were, weren't right then. Um, but maybe it is temporary, and then they might make that mistake, and they'll only do it maybe 25 instead of 50. Who knows what it, what's going on? It is very complex right now. And that's the reason why I've said in your portfolio, you can have a long-term position, but you've got to ameliorate it somehow with either put options or something that is in a different area completely. Um, that's kind of what we've been doing. And the other thing is you want to have some cash ready. You there's going to be an opportunity, no matter way, which way we look at it, there'll be some kind of sudden smash, not like yesterday. That was kind of, that was more emotional. I mean that suddenly things come together very negatively, and it's not a one day, but it's like a three to a whole week of just down, down, down every single day. Um, but within that context, when you think about it, wow, the market has really helped. Oh, now I, I want to go back to what I wanted to talk about. The TBT, which is the bonds. Uh, holding near the highs at 24.47, up 12 cents. Is it going to be, is this a doji candle by the end of the day, a peak D by, with a lower lower yields, sorry, lower TBT next week and lower yields? That's the big question. Have a look at, oh, I don't know if I have time. I'll do it. Let's just do this quickly. As it comes up, the other things I want to talk about. So let's go to this right here. I'll do it for subscribers to my opening call in greater detail tomorrow. I just wanted to show it today. Remember my triple yield chart? Um, have a look at this. What we've got is the 30-year, the white is the 30-year T-bond yield. Um, the T-Y-X, the brown is the T-N-X. Uh, that's the 10-year yield. And the F-V-X is the cyan. And look at this. The cyan is up. Today's high is... I've got to, every day I've had to update this. Today's high is, is 30.29. The 30-year the, um, is 30.18, and the 10-year is 20.54. In other words, 2 point. It's 3 point. I wrote 3.018. It's not that anymore. And, and look, the cyan is way above. I've been talking about a yield curve, right? So, and look what happened in wood, the iShares of the Gober Forestry and Timber ETF. It went to a new 
Uh, it went over the resistance line earlier this week. Now it's back under. And look, even the home builders tried to rally. So that's what I'm saying. This is an extremely mixed market. If you're in the right areas, that's fine. But there are fewer and fewer right areas at this particular time. Respect the market. It's vulnerable and it's very vulnerable in April and a while long. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 295. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Oh, boy, so three questions on. Let me get to them right away. So the question uh, is, could there be a Dow rally today? Well, once you get to minus 450, it makes a rally really important um, to occur. What are we now? We're now just about 11 o'clock by 1210. If there is a rally starting off with a SPY, um, trading down 58 at 43.31, you can see all these uh, Chapman Wave automated support levels right here, 438 uh, in the 4, 43.20s, 28 area. If there is a rally that can hold, uh, let's see, if it can hold about 43.44 between 12.10 and 12.30, and any pullback is held nicely, and it actually starts to go to the 43.50 area. That's 20 points from here, but it makes 20 points in a split second these days. Then I say that you'd have a, a little bit of rally, but I've got a feeling that the last 30 minutes is going to be weak. So you have to treat it as a rally, get in and get out. But I'd be real careful because it's already gone to the 500 area, down 500. Not good. Next question was uh, Newmont Mining. Uh, I say Basil, 
a long time ago you said as a long term buy and hold it's a good place to be what should happen now and you want mining you want mining uh, made a peak after doji high at 86.37 on the 18th of april pulling back really sharply give it a little time i think gold gold will be back in play in a little bit and you might have had a spectacular move um i'd say it's at 73. The low today is 70.60. You know what? If it can get to the 200 period moving average of 66, give me a yell. Let's look at it again. That might be your next entry as a longer term uh, if you've taken money off. Uh, that's the one. What's the third question? Third question was uh, oh, Dow Chemical. You mentioned it recently as a stock you liked, but you didn't get in. Uh, yeah, he has this whole thing with the double tops. I'll, I'll do a show on double tops on Monday. I'll do some for my stats, my, my, uh, overview, uh, in my overview video for the week uh, on Saturday. 71.38 was Dow Chemical High back in the week, the 21st of May in 2021. We've got to get from high to the high this week of 71.86 within half a point. Now, just a little bit of up today. Just putting that. So yeah, I, I like.